Welcome back to Wood Guru. Subscribe for woodworking tutorials. Um, today I've got a simple project. We had a dishwasher that probably hasn't worked in a few decades. So we're going to take that space, build the cabinets back in. I'm going to build the ca cabinets in place. The countertop's already in. Here's the before photo, as you can see. I'm restoring it to a 1950s cabinet. G'day! Um, I'm going to start now by putting the base in for this cabinet. Um, i got my laser level set and I just need to get my height the same as the rest of the other cabinet. So the, the laser line, that's my level height there, as you can see, it's pretty much all the way around, so I've got a nice flat, plain level surface. Seriously, don't do anything about a laser level. This is a waste of time. So I got the base down, I used a 2x6 frame just because I had it, um, and now I'm going to put the base down the 3 quarter inch plywood that's going to be the bottom of the cabinet. So I'm going to cut that, and then I'm going to cut the sides. My track saw sits on a track, cuts a straight line, it's really good for cutting pieces of plywood. You could do it on a table saw, but it's a lot easier with a track saw. The saw moves, the plywood doesn't. So the track can be clamped on for uh, mitered or beveled cuts. That's what I would opt for. But this is just a straight cut, so it'll just stay with uh, friction. You get a, a perfect factory cut. So now the base of the cabinet is in place, ready to do the sides and the back, which are optional, but I want to do it just because it's nasty. Uh. Alright, so I've got a screw in the way where I need to put a sheet of plywood. Uh, so I've got to cut it gently, and we want to make it a nice cut because there's a power socket on the other side. So I'm not going to use this tool. I'm going to use my special cutting screw. Got a hammer, screw, cut. And we have a beautiful clean cut from the hammer. Don't waste time with a tool. All right, I'm gonna cut the sides and the back for the cabinet. It's important to use a 1 and 3 8 inch uh, screw so it doesn't come through the two pieces of plywood so it doesn't stick out the other side. Face frame, uh, the top piece is a middle million between the drawer and the doors. Toe piece of the face, so I've got them cut. I'm gonna drill them out with my pocket drill, Craig jig. This is a $20 jig, it's the cheapest one you can get. It does the job for what I'm doing, so that's cool. Obviously, you're not gonna go into production with one of these. So I got the face frame uh, cut, it's prime drying, um, and now I'm going to make the doors. The 
So the Craig Jig drills a hole in the wood and it is pre-drilled for the angle and the screw has a flat flat head on it so when it hits where you've drilled it to it'll stop so you don't screw so you don't there I am so you don't screw in too far. So this is a detail I've got to create on um, on the doors and drawer faces so it shuts closer to flush, half flush. So that's what I'm doing now. Try and stop me. So now I've got the uh, edge of the door dadoed on the hinge side, not on the uh, shutter side, it's double doors. It's going to be square to match the other doors. So I'm doing a 1 8 round over with my router just to match the existing cabinets. And then it's draw face to match existing. Next step is installing the face frame. I'm starting with the bottom piece, putting on a little bit of wood glue, and I'm gonna face nail it for the front because it's paint grade and I can hide that. Now I'm gonna install the middle rail and I'm gonna use the pocket screws that I've drilled in it previously. I got two pieces of plywood there to get my height level because the base is already level, so if I measure up parallel from that, I'm going to be good and I'm using the wood so I don't have to think about where it goes. I just put on the wood and it's right. So now I'm going to uh, put the face frame in the top. Just putting the screws in. Check the length. That's good enough. Glue it. Clamp it. Screw it. Scoot around on my butt. Measure the stuff. Measure some more stuff. Double measure. So I'm using my laser level to mark the center of the door and make sure I put the first door in plumb and in the right place. I've also linked all my tools in the description box down below. So uh, with these hinges I don't trust them, so I'm making the doors longer and then I'm going to um, cut them to length after I pinch them. It's right here. <laughs> Okay, so now um, I've got the cabinet built, the doors are on, and now I just got to make a draw box. I've got the guides, I've got soft closing uh, side mounted guides. It's important to make sure that the cabinet is square uh, so that the draw guides aren't on an angle like this or like that. I put some shims in there to so that the draw can clear the, the, uh, the face frame of the cabinet, and I put those in and made sure they're parallel. Time to make the box and uh, Put the face on it and uh, that cabinet will be pretty much done and ready for paint and prep. So I'm using like a, um, a bird's, bird's eye uh, pine for the box. The piece I got was fairly straight when I got it but it wasn't like cured. Uh, and it got a little bit twisted up because I didn't really have it stored perfectly flat, which you really need to do. So my bad. Um, so they're not very straight as you can kind of see here. They're a little off and that could affect the operation of this draw box. Now, a clever person would scrap this and get some plywood and start from scratch. But I'm going to try and straighten it because I want to use this wood. Uh, and I'll see if I can straighten it out. Wish I did it last night. So first I soaked it in water. These are wet now and I'm going to try and bend them back and clamp them. Hi. 
So now I've clamped it the other way. So I've got a little bit of, I've got some cardboard shims, two in the center and then one and one, try and get that that curve out um, and uh, when the wood dries, hopefully it'll stay like that. Now I'm just gonna do the um, 1000 green bottles sitting on a wall song and then after that, we'll see what that wood looks like. Just wait there and we're gonna do this live. 1000 green bottles of beer on the wall, 1000 green bottles of beer. I'm gonna cut right here. All right, there you are. Uh, in the meantime, um, I can fix this. This was a lip that goes underneath the tile. I had to cut it to get rid of the decrepit and ancient and non-functioning dishwasher that used to exist in this space. So I had to cut it with a fine saw. It's an ugly rough cut. So I'm going to clamp a straight edge to it and cut it out smooth. Make a little piece here. We call that a Dutchman. Um, but it's just a piece of wood with the same nosing. And I'm going to put it in there bundle it up, get it ready for paint, while my drawbox wood is becoming straighter. So I'm using my fine saw here to cut the cabinet straight. I've screwed a piece of plywood in to give myself a straight edge to cut against. And voila. So uh, I cut the piece to go in here. It's not cut to length yet, but I, uh, I didn't have the router bit to do the radius. Let's put it again. I had a piece of half round, half inch, and then I uh, cut the section I needed, the radius is close enough, ripped down a piece of poplar, put them together, so you can see, I'll cut that to length, get that cleaned up. So uh, I'm putting the um, bondo on where I put the join. I, I started running it without the camera. I'm gonna mix them up. It's about a good mix. I don't know what that is, like one tenth hardener, something like that. Depends on the heat, it's quite warm so I don't need much. So you can actually shape the Bondo um, with the knife or chisel when it's nearly dry but you can also end up pulling it off so it's better to let it fully dry and then shape it and sand it. So I ran out of green bottles, so let's see if uh, the draw face um, pieces have straightened out. So it worked pretty good, they straightened quite a lot and you can test by uh, putting them, I got them back to back right now, it's workable, I can do it. So I got the front and back piece made at least because that was straight, so um, I've cut a slot in there. Just wide enough, which is just a little over 3 sixteenths of an inch, just a little bit wider than the piece of plywood that I got. So it'll slide in. That's how a little touch. So the bottom of the cabinet box uh, slides into the slots that I've cut into the four face pieces, which are mitered, glued and nailed together. So I had to do a little adjustment when I installed this uh, draw box just to get it operating more smoothly. In the meantime I had uh, attached the face frame which was painted. Um, we lost the footage for that. There's a situation. <coughs> a power driver just wouldn't uh... Wouldn't work in this situation, I'd just end up stripping the screw. These handles are probably like handmade from a long time ago, so they, the holes aren't perfect. So they don't just interchange so easily. Now it matches the rest of the kitchen. So we've kept it kind of original to the 1950s theme. For now, thanks for watching. Uh, hit subscribe, um, and I'll see you next time on wonkluru.com. But it's done, so moving on. This is a 1950s kitchen. Uh, it'll do, and what do you know? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and thank you for watching.